I mean, what? quit picking on Bobby. That'd be a good start. Well, not the one picking on Bobby. Well, Who you started it for the record. I thought we were supposed to pick on you. Yeah, you are. Want to watch a lawyer squirm? Do's and don'ts. Springs publicly ask legal advice questions on experts in their field. The clock has started. We are back. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Miss Campbell. And one more episode of Do's and Don'ts. Um, I think the way we set it up, this has to be the second one. We can't jump the last one and put this one first. Okay to make you more entertaining. Um, so, are you ready? Yes. Okay, again, Bobby Ray Kemper, do's and don'ts, joined by Angela Campbell of Dickie Campbell Law Firm here in Des Moines, East Side, Des Moines. Yes. And uh, specialize in everything, um, ass kicking, all of the above, government, non-government. And uh, one of your, I don't know, is it a passion? or interest? Cell phones? Cell phones. I would say interest. Passion makes it sound like... Too much. Like I would just do it in my free time rather than as like a business. You know a lot about cell phones. I know a lot about cell phones. And a lot about cell phone analytics, cell phone data, cell phone extractions. Yes. We've talked a lot about cell phones on this podcast for the last two years. Yes. They're a very important part of any area of the law did you see that in the uk and i don't know if this is fake news or not you tell me in the uk supposedly um they they're passing the law or have passed a law that would require um complainants in sex abuse cases to turn over their cell phones and have their cell phones extracted before a case can go for, for forward did you see that or? i have heard of that being proposed in various um, forms. So I'm not surprised that you've heard that. I don't know that it's passed, but well, in my Googling, getting ready for this, my, my deep research that came up. So to really throw a wrench in this, okay. um, we, we, again, do's and don'ts. We go on Reddit, we go on legal advice that's publicly asked and we pull, we try to find some random shit, honestly. Mm -hmm. And when we talked about cell phones, there was a lot of questions about cell phones. Okay. So we're gonna take a we're gonna take a curveball here, and I have four topics. Four. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna read you just the just the subject, and you're gonna pick which one we go into. Okay. Okay, and if you know the answer right off the bat and just like one sentence it, answer okay. it, and then that one loses, and then we go to the next. Okay. All right. I'm gonna save that one. Then. First question. Legal advice, off topic, but it's on topic for our topic. Do you have to unlock your phone for the police? Can they force you to? No, but they can get a warrant and they can do it themselves sometimes. Okay. So this probably isn't the one we want to talk about because you just answered that. Um, follow up. If the police get a warrant for your phone, can they use that to crawl through material that is not physically on your phone, but accessible, even transparently accessible via your phone? Example, Google Photos. Interesting. Let's save that Let's one as an option. Let's save that one. That's, that's okay. still in the running. This one will be near and dear to your heart. From Weird Profit 2424 wants to know, police used Celebrite to break into my phone. <laughs> How do I prevent this in the future? Okay. okay. Throw keep, it away or no, we'll, we'll save it just yep. in case. Finally, I'm not <laughs> pulling favorites. How common is it for detectives to tap into an iPhone to gain evidence over something like drug related matters and or stealing? What can they actually access? Would they be sitting there listening through your microphone 24 seven? You want me to take that one. They're all kind of connected. They right? are all kind of it's all, connected. It's about access to cell phones and how you protect your data. So I did answer the first one quickly, but in thinking about it, there would be a caveat. So, oh, so asterisks. Asterisks. 
they you cannot be compelled to provide information from in a criminal investigation against yourself. You're protected against that. Look at the, this is important because th this be compelled. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have to, right? To you don't have to if you if the if your the question is do you have to say something in order for the detective to get what they want? The answer is no. You never. You have the right to remain silent. Amen. Amen. But you do one T, not two T's. One T. You can't prevent them from getting things that aren't talking. So fingerprints, DNA, retinal scans, face recognition software, any of those kinds of things. Um, that that is not considered to be. Uh, testimony where you're inculpating yourself. You're not saying something that causes you to be... Your ugly mug can't convict yourself. Right. Okay, so let's be clear on that because this is important. We've said this, I think, 20 times on the podcast. Um, facial recognition. If they get a warrant for your phone and all you have preventing law enforcement from getting into your phone is facial recognition, can they, with that warrant, hold the phone to your face and then access your phone that way? Unlock it. I mean, I would still file a motion saying no. Sure, we would. We, we Absolutely. Would. We're going to fight but about it. But I think there's a really good argument for the state that they can do that because they can compel your fingerprint. So they can make you do the fingerprint mm -hmm. thing, that, the thumbprint that opens it. They can do retinal scans. They can do all those other things. They can take your DNA. So anything physical they can take from your body, your face is not, is, is not protected. That's so, not private. So do. Do have a password on your phone. Or passcode. Uh, yeah, passcode and or you know the the puzzle the puzzle or but make it as long as they uh, they allow for that phone. So the, so law enforcement to answer one of these other questions, iPhone, Apple's in this constant sort of cat and mouse game with law enforcement about protecting users' data, and so they keep making it harder and harder for them to crack it. Mm -hmm. Now some of our Android phones, the law enforcement is better able to crack. The, you can get the data without knowing the password than an, an iPhone, usually. Okay. Um, so use the longest password you can. Um, and So that's the how to prevent Celebrate from breaking into my phone. Right. Long-ass passwords. Long-ass passwords, get an iPhone. Better yet, just don't put shit on your phone that is going to... This is my number one Easier problem. Easier said than Like, done. don't take pictures of the drugs and the money. And the guns. And the guns. And the minors. And the minors, <laughs> and just don't don't put it on your phone. Right. If, it, it, yeah. So don't have anything on your phone that you wouldn't want your mom to see. That's what I always say. Kind of like a billboard. Like a billboard. But if you do, <laughs> and you want to protect it, or if you have something legitimately private that you want to protect that is not, you know, criminal. I'm not advocating for criminal activity, but you would want the long password. And we're not sponsored, for the record, by iPhone. No. I don't like iPhone. I just changed the iPhone, and I regret it. Do you? I do. I don't think it's all it's cracked up to be. I, I really don't. It's a whole different way of thinking that my brain is not wired to think. So okay. we got those. Okay. So if we're doing the warrant, scope of the warrant, or tapping, tapping. the iPhone. Let's do the tapping. Let's please do that. Let's please okay, do tapping. the tapping because I think that's one thing. They're like, my phone is staticky. I think they're tapping my phone. There are wiretaps out there. They're, um, wiretaps without wires? Yes. Okay. What is that? Tell us. Okay. So they have to have a special type of warrant um, to listen into conversations, and there's a lot of extra requirements, and, the, and and it's harder to do than your average person thinks. Is it fair to say, like, for the most part, run-of-the-mill state investigations are not going to have that authorization? Correct. The most you got to be a big target to get that authorization. You have to be a big target. There has to be a lot of money behind the investigation. And you have to get special permission. And, and there's time limits and all these things to listen in on conversations mm -hmm. if you're the government. Right. Now, the easier thing to do for the government is up. they don't need a warrant to have a snitch, which we now know what that means a snitch uh -huh. a cooperating witness call you and talk to you on the phone and record you because you don't need permission to record an, a th another person no you only Not need a Iowa. warrant if you are law enforcement and you're trying to listen in on conversations where the two, you are not a party. both people don't know you're on there. So if it's an undercover cop that you're knowingly having a phone call with, you don't know they're a cop, but you know you're talking to a person, 
that undercover cop can in Iowa 1000% record the entirety of that conversation. Correct. And it, the your soon to be ex girlfriend can do it. Mm -hmm. Ex wife, ex husband. You the the you know guy that calls you wanting to buy drugs might mm -hmm. not really be wanting to buy drugs for himself. He might be undercover. All those people can record. Yep. So, but to just straight up tap is it's not impossible, but it's it's an elaborate process. Now, so they tap the phone, so they get they go through the elaborate process. This is big big stakes investigation. Mm -hmm. They they go through that process. They get the tap. Does that mean that they can Amazon you and like access your your because uh, that's what the person is asking? Access your microphone and then listen to everything you talk about outside of a phone conversation, or do we know? It would, that's a good ask question. That's a good question. <laughs> they would have to have special to do it. Um, and be able to use it against you, they would have to have that specifically set out in the warrant. Now, does it does the technology exist to allow for that? I think we're on the edge of that. Yeah. And if they can't for criminal investigations, you think we're on the edge of that? I don't know that we're on the edge for criminal investigations, but I know that the technology for if you have an open app mm -hmm. and it does listen and has information coming from not just when you're on conversations. Listen, we know. Listen. We know social media, Facebook, Instagram, listens to your thoughts and then feeds you ads and then gets you to buy stupid shit based upon what you talk about. I know that. It's a thing. Which means... Which means it can be done. It can be done. Now, does your average law enforcement have the capability and the type of employees that would be able to harness that technology to use it in the run-of-the-mill case to listen to whether or not someone that's charged with a you know minor misdemeanor or felony in state court are they are they doing that no they don't have that mm -hmm. i mean we barely have people that are sufficient in being able to read cell phone extractions at the Thank state you, level yeah. <laughs> so we don't have the the know the know-how within our law enforcement community locally that that that's happening on any sort of regular basis now but you asking me is it possible in theory with the technology, I can't say that it's not. We'd say, I'd, I'd say probable. Probable, I mean. But they would have to get, that, that would have to be a specific request in the warrant application, right? Because right? then it affects other people they're talking to and all that fun stuff. Right, I mean, they get, they get surveillance cameras approved. They get, you know, all sorts of things approved that, you know, I've seen undercover videos. I've seen undercover recordings, all these other things that happen. Um, not from the person's own cell phone, but they can get that permission. A judge is going to give them that permission. The question is, can you connect big enough case, get the permission, and someone that knows how to set it up, and you know the technology able to pull it off, and a case that, that warrants it. I mean, it would have to be a pretty major case to be warranting it at this point. And then there's somebody out there right now as we're talking saying, well, could they access your camera as well and then see everything that's going on in your phone, outside of your phone? I can't say no. Because we're, put, we're putting on a tinfoil cap right now. I know. I can't say no. I've never seen it. Never seen it. Never seen in it. In all your years. In all your my young years. years. In all your young years in of, all my of young doing years defense. Of doing defense. I've never seen a scenario where they're getting the own person's cell phone is they're accessing the camera and taking pictures. But, but we've heard about hackers doing yeah, that kind of stuff. Right. So here's the other thing is if a hacker does it and then turns it over to law enforcement then they can use it Ooh, wait Ooh, hey this ties in mm -hmm. bill of rights only applies to government action so if a private person does it not at the direction of a government and then turns it over then they can use it they haven't violated your constitutional rights because the government hasn't taken an action against you you might have a lawsuit against that third person you might have all these things but that doesn't mean that evidence is excludable in a criminal case against you Preach. necessarily okay okay so if we're if we're answering this the the iphone tapping we'd say do if we sum this up into do's and don'ts actually we got a little bit of time before that okay i think we should answer to what extent can they get so this is a good question so if the police get a warrant for your phone does that also relate to things that are, for example, materials that are saved in the cloud? iPhone or iPhotos, I, uh, whatever it's called, I, 
Google Photos? Is that what you're oh, talking about? Your your Apple, your Apple account that everything's oh. saved in the cloud. What's that called? Your Apple account. Yeah, that okay. one. Yep. <laughs> Apple account, Google account, whatever it may be. The, the iPhotos. The, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. things that are backed up. Okay. Yeah. Does that include that? How does that work? It's a devolving area of the law, to be honest. They, um, I think, the warrants are getting more and more detailed. The technology is getting more and more sophisticated. It used to be we could only access what was on the cell phone on the device itself device. Okay. with the technology that was available to extract a cell phone. Celebrite released a new technology called Insights, which um, it, it drastically expands that. And there's a lot of questions and stuff Privacy revolved, concerns, revolving around that. that. But if you have a warrant, think about this. If you have the warrant for the phone, you get all the information for the phone. I mean, if someone got my phone, for example, I have stored on my phone so that I don't have to type in my Facebook password every time that I just open Facebook and it knows my Facebook password. So my phone already has that password. So when I do so an technically extraction, that information is on the phone, your information is on the phone. And so I get when I download a cell phone, if it's a, especially if it's a, a phone that does that, that saves those, there's going to be a password to, uh, like data point that I can get that'll tell me all their passwords for all of these apps mm, that are on their phone. Okay. So I already, we were getting to the point where we could access that information. The question is, can the government then do it? And crawl up that hole. Like, crawl up that. And I'm thinking bank accounts, credit cards. Everything, your, your flight schedules. Your health information <sighs> on your health app. Mm -hmm. your, um, you know, you're connecting to your pedometer. You ha so how many you, steps? How many steps, when, where your you Your Garmin walk. Connect account, what your average heart rate is. Yep. Oh, this is deep. Your prescriptions. Mm -hmm. your, I mean, we're seeing... Walgreens notices. Yep. 15, 20, sometimes 50 passwords saved on a phone. You know, you have every social media account. You have your email passwords for all your email accounts. You have, those, that data wasn't historically stored on the phone. And sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. But the password is now on the phone. And so what Insights is doing and what the new technology is doing is they are using that information to access all, those all the stuff webs. out on the web. Now, they they have access to that information anyway by virtue of subpoena power. Or if they know power. where to go. If they know where to go. But right. now this is giving me a roadmap to where they go. So all it takes for them to eliminate this sort of question is to say, okay, we did the cell phone extraction judge. In that cell phone extraction, we found four email accounts that we didn't even know this guy had. Here's our warrant for us to send it to that email provider and get all those emails. And the judge generally would say yes, and then they would get it from the email provider. What this other technology does is it sort of skips the subpoena part. They say warrant, judge, but we can do it ourselves because we know how to we access it. We can crawl it. back We can those. crawl through okay. and get all that because we have all this information already to access it. Judge, give us permission to do that, and, they, and then they'll be able to do it. So it's not a question of whether or not I mean, I think there'd be a legitimate question if they had a warrant just for the phone and they tried to use that warrant to, to creep out and get everything, right? They, I think you'd have at least a grounds to argue it exceeded the scope of the warrant. Mm -hmm. But, a, you know, a smart officer is simply just going to get another warrant and get right. that information before they do it. So this is a good promotion for um, the Dope Yoda special episode that we did on burner phones. <laughs> We won't go into that, nor do we necessarily. If you want to protect your privacy, there's ways to protect your privacy. And they're all contained on GRL Raw. So, quick summary, do's and don'ts. Don't use your phone and think it's private. Do. Use your passwords, protect your phone. Don't link all of your accounts on one phone. If you have a super secret email you don't want anyone to know about, don't load it onto your iPhone. Look at that. Common sense. Common sense. Do talk to people face to face. Yeah. Call them because they probably haven't wiretapped you and they can't historically go back and get that recorded, that conversation historical, whereas they can get historical emails, historical texts, et cetera. They can't get historical, you know, waves of conversation happening over the airwaves. So, Amen. There so we talk go. to people. Talk to people. Connect individually face to face. That's all we have. This episode of Do's and Don'ts. Thank you, Angela. Sure. You yep. crushed it as expected. All right. See Thank you guys you. next time.